Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Hello everyone. Welcome to the third installment of the Matrix Trilogy. This is the Matrix Revolutions. Now this is a movie I have issues with. It is for me a disappointment in the Matrix Trilogy. So the fanboy in me doesn't give it a pass. Unlike the second one which I really like a lot. I have issues with this and it starts to come in after you start realizing where they're going. Now, I would say one of the saving graces is it's the first time we get to see like a real Superman fight. If you want to say like people flying with super strength and but the movie's bogged down way too much. This angle of trying to. I guess show the human human side, the humanity a little more, and his quest to get to the city just doesn't work for me. And I like the beginning, you know, he's trapped in limbo, or it's called mobile. Or everybody returns, so you don't have to get into the actors and directors. But they're trying to tell their story, and this is this third chapter, and it's a disappointment for me. I think. Not only disappointing from a fanboy perspective, uh, I think it's disappointing from a critical perspective. You, I like to watch these movies back to back, and the third one's always just takes the takes the momentum out, takes the fun out. If you want to kill a character, make it epic, but don't draw it out. I joked in my last one that it was an 18 minute death scene. It just feels fucking like an hour. Their, their perspective showing kind of is, is it's different. It's weird. It doesn't affect me as much. Um, and as somebody who would get into the cerebral stuff, um, it's lacking in that aspect as it's okay. It's, it's his struggles. Uh, in his human form, uh, they've got to beat all odds, uh, you know, is it Providence and all this type of stuff, but the other one had the key master and, you know, at least it, it had, uh, a good up and the good up and downs. This one seemed, I don't know, a little too much on point. Like, like you were narrow, it was narrowly focused in a way where. When it split back and forth between, oh, oh are the human's going to get killed, is Neo going to be successful, all right, let's get to the last boss fight. It doesn't work for me as a whole. It, it didn't bring me that joy in rewatchability. Yes, okay, I, found, I got to see the third chapter. It's their story. Well, I give George Lucas the same props. Uh, he made the prequels. He did what he wanted to do. He tried to make a breakthrough in the way he... Filmed everything uh, against like blue screens and green screens. And now looking back at it, you can tell, you know, every scene's like a walking scene. This feels like they, the first two movies were a trap for them. And maybe expressing, you know, yourself in an artistic way, they felt they had to go this route. But from the pacing to the story arc, I'm, dis I'm disappointed. And a lot of these movies, I don't go deep dives into them. You know, they're 10, 15 minutes long in a sense. Just how I feel about it, what I enjoyed from it, what I didn't. This movie has a lot of negatives that outweigh the good. And I think that's where I come into the balance of things. Because I try to be neutral and, oh, it's a fanboy. I get to see Neo always oh, flying and fighting. It's, oh, it looks like the, the rain and... The, the sound uh, bubbles and things with some epic uh, iconic visuals. But when everything else isn't uh, as good when you're, you know, like the, I could see where you meet the architect in the second movie and that's the people's big gripe. I enjoyed that. Here, 
the changes in pace and the the pacing of the story just didn't allow me to enjoy it as much. Uh, you know, again, they might have did a couple of cool things here and there, and, you know, yay. Now, does it ruin the trilogy? No. Um, like, in the end result, do I recommend this movie? No. But, you know, looking back in hindsight, I could say, just watch the first movie. And the world is yours to imagine and create. That might be a legitimate uh, way of thinking about it. Because once you get into the second movie, which I love, you're stuck at the ending. And this ending is picked up so close and another thing this movie came out six months after the first one i think it's still considered a 2003 movie and i mentioned that in the matrix reloaded podcast i did you can't i I just don't see it maybe they were going back to the serialized movie days or because i don't even know how they did it or you know thinking like a society maybe as a culture we were ready for it like we offered netflix and i don't know it just didn't seem like it worked and ultimately if you're going to do something like that do it really good that's that's kind of something i might go to every once in a while because i think when people are disappointed things don't go their way it's not what they envision happening oh this doesn't make sense to them if you do it really good you can win these people over Right, this is not where I wanted the movie to go. I didn't want to see this, this slant on things. This is not what I would have wrote as a writer. Uh, I could bet write better fan fiction, that type thing. And it's it's legit for this movie. It's it's not. A, it doesn't ruin it for me though. I do like the Matrix trilogy. I kind of respect where they wanted to go and where they went. I don't agree with it. And I think the third movie, Revolutions, is not a very good movie. So it it weighs more as the end piece. I don't know. I I guess critically, I could, I wouldn't argue with somebody who says, you know what? It it ruins the trilogy for them. I don't know. I don't, I just don't think that way. I don't think anything, even remakes and, um, you know, remaking Ghostbusters, that doesn't take the love of the original Ghostbusters away from me. Or I hate it doing like a new, maybe a Buffy or a Battlestar Galactica. It's not going to ruin it for me. And I don't agree with that mindset. Although I do agree, stop fucking remaking these movies. You don't need to. But if you're going to do it, do it fucking good. I don't know. But I do come away from this movie as the one I don't watch in my binge. You know, I watch one and two. I don't, I don't watch three. Um, I'm, I'm happy in a way that I know the, I I know their vision and okay, that's where they wanted to go. But for me, it's not going to be in the wheelhouse of enjoyment when you're just on that ride. So the second movie kept that ride going for me. It might be not what I would have done. It has a little, you know, nitpicks, but there's a lot of fun with it and I get carried along. Okay. They went a different way. They wanted to make an impact with this movie and I, just don't agree with where they went. Um, I think you had a lot more options to go with, but this is their vision. It just this doesn't work for me. And I could at least agree or see aspects of the movie that don't sit well with general moviegoers. Uh, now, if I'm correct, they're making a new Matrix movie. And I think Keanu Reeves is coming out with it on the same day as John Wick. I don't know if that's just a joke, me and my friend, but I saw it in an advertisement. Maybe they'll change things with this pandemic virus, lockdown stuff. But I don't know where they'll go with it. I am always interested in the Wachowskis. I think that they could uh, still provide a lot of great entertainment. I love Sense8. Um, it's a, I think it was an HBO show and it got like picked up for its last episodes, two hour special for another company anyway I think they're creative and they're good at it 
And I, I do try to balance like what I want to happen and what their vision is. And I could sometimes balance that, but I think I can't do that for the third movie. I don't think it's, um, I think the flaws overshadow what they were trying to do. And I guess that'll be my wrap on this trilogy. Do I think the Matrix trilogy is bad? No. Does it have a bad ending? Um, you know, no, I don't think the ending is bad because you got, I, I could see going that way anyway. So let's say you had the movie you wanted Neo and uh, um, Trinity to sacrifice themselves to um, convince the machines of one thing or another. Fine. But it's how you got there, how you decided to pace everything, the story you tried to tell with the other characters and where you focused, uh, you know, and the effort you put into focusing that I disagree with. So the Matrix Revolutions, um, I guess from a technical point, an okay movie is a fanboy thing. It's a disappointment. On a general level, I think it has a lot of flaws. I think it had a bad pacing, decision making, going in directions, but you leave that up to their vision. So take it for what you will. I hope everybody's doing well. Stay safe. I'll see you all next time.